Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Jet aircraft are among the fastest and most advanced planes in the world. However, their successful day-to-day -day operation entirely depends on proper maintenance of the jet engines that allow them to fly at supersonic speeds. When testing and repairing these engines, few facilities are more important than what's known as a hush house. Hush houses are intended to provide a controlled environment where jet engines can be run at full power to assess their performance, functionality, and noise levels without disturbing the surrounding area. They generally consist of a soundproof building or tunnel of thick concrete walls and a reinforced roof. The walls are designed to minimize the transmission of noise and vibrations to the outside environment. F-35 Lightning II is considered one of the most advanced fighter planes in the world. Therefore, it's little surprise that this state-of-the-art aircraft would utilize one of the most advanced jet engines in the world. The Pratt & Whitney F-135 Nonetheless, engineers at Pratt & Whitney are always looking to improve their engines and keep their aircraft as competitive as possible. In order to improve the F-135's range, thrust, and fuel efficiency, the team created a demonstrator engine with turbine and compressor technologies. This engine saw extensive testing in one of Pratt & Whitney's many hush house facilities. Since these facilities allow them to test the engine at full power while it is still on the ground, they can monitor every aspect of its function and make changes and enhancements whenever necessary. Before the F-35 arrived, the Lockheed Martin F-22 was the most advanced plane in the United States military's fleet. Its two Pratt & Whitney F-119 PW turbofans provided enough thrust to propel this plane to speeds of more than 1,500 miles per hour. Achieving this much thrust requires the use of afterburners, which helps provide an additional burst of thrust on demand. The afterburner works by injecting and igniting fuel into the exhaust stream of the jet engine after it is passed through the turbine. This creates a secondary combustion process that further increases the temperature and velocity of the exhaust gases. These systems can also be tested in hush houses, which are maintained and overseen by aerospace propulsion experts. These men undergo extensive training to ensure they can accurately perform their duties. They also understand the importance of hush houses, which provide a safe and controlled environment for testing, even the most extreme capabilities of jet engine systems. Ultimately, if something were to go wrong during a hush house test, the aerospace propulsion team working on the engine could immediately address it.
Even in worst case scenario, the protective design of each hush house would ensure any damage would be wholly confined to that area. On the other hand, when things go wrong on the tarmac or in the air, it could have severe ramifications for pilots, equipment, and personnel. Undoubtedly, one of the most successful Pratt & Whitney engines in the United States military history is the F-100. This afterburning turbofan was first introduced in the 1970s and has gone on to power such iconic planes as the F-15 Eagle and the F-16 Fighting Falcon. Recently, Hermius, a startup focused on developing hypersonic aircraft that could radically accelerate air travel, began testing this 50-year-old engine for integration into its larger, turbine-based Combined Cycle Propulsion System, or TBCC. The company describes the TBCC as a hybrid between a turbine engine and a ramjet engine. The turbine is used for slower speeds, with the company's proprietary ramjet design activating at higher speeds. A ramjet differs significantly from conventional jet engines, which rely on a compressor to compress the incoming air. Contrarily, a ramjet engine has no moving parts, instead utilizing the aircraft's forward speed to compress the air for combustion. The primary TBCC engine design being undertaken by Hermius is called Chimera. Again, this is essentially a hybrid between a turbojet and a ramjet. The ability to switch between these two modes will allow Hermius's prototype aircraft, the Quarter House, to take from a regular runway and then accelerate up to high Mach speeds. So far, the majority of tests in which the Chimera engines switch back and forth between these two modes have taken place inside a specially designed hush house. This provides a safe and secure environment where engineers can evaluate the aircraft's abilities even though the plane itself is still under development. It's important to note that Chimera is unique in terms of hypersonic engine designs. Most platforms utilize traditional rocket engines, which add an element of danger and unpredictability that make getting FAA certification very difficult. Chimera's use of a ramjet will help make its planes much easier to integrate into current passenger transportation efforts without the added risks. Ramjet technology never saw significant use until the space race of the 1950s and 60s. For this reason, Hermes is far from the only company working on utilizing these air-breathing engines for various purposes. Due to their inherent lack of complexity, aerospace companies can develop small, tabletop ramjet engines that do not require a hush house to operate safely. Much like private aerospace companies, the United States military works hard to both maintain and enhance the engines they have in service. Much of this is accomplished by component maintenance squadrons. As part of the United States Air Force, these men and women are responsible for maintaining and repairing multiple aircraft components. This includes engines, avionics, landing gear, hydraulics, electrical systems, and more. In the case of aircraft engines, each squadron will have a dedicated section or shop specializing in engine maintenance.
Common tasks include conducting regular inspections to identify potential engine issues or abnormalities. They use diagnostic equipment and techniques to assess the engine performance and detect faults or failures. When an engine requires maintenance or repair, the technicians will often work to disassemble the engine. replacing worn out or damaged components, or fixing those that are still usable. After the engine's received, it goes to a work crew, where that engine is essentially torn down to the bare bones as far as the maintenance requires, and then it's built back up. At the end of that build-up process, we inspect the engine, and then we send it to our test facility to ops check everything that we've done. Finally, the engine comes back to us and we perform the same regimen of inspections to make sure that that engine is ready to go. All in all, there's about six main steps of the process that we do. And each step is very important to get done right because at the end of the day, these engines go into aircraft and you don't want anything going wrong when that plane is in the air. Sometimes engines will experience a catastrophic failure due to something completely unrelated to their internal functioning. The two primary examples of this are bird strikes and FOD damage. FOD is foreign object debris that is sometimes sucked into the massive jet intakes at the front of the engine. Due to the sensitive nature of these systems, which often feature thousands of moving parts, even small FOD incidents can cause major damage to the internal engine components. This is also the reason why both air bases and aircraft carriers hold regular FOD walks. personnel scours the tarmac and runways for anything that might be accidentally pulled into a jet intake. From man-made items like nuts and bolts to natural items like rocks and pebbles, everything must be carefully retrieved before flight operations can begin. Perhaps the most famous facility related to the United States Air Force maintenance is Tinker Air Force Base in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. As the home of the 76th Propulsion Maintenance Group and the Oklahoma City Air Logistics Complex, this base has become integral to a wide range of maintenance, repair, and overhaul activities related to military aircraft engines. The site boasts a highly skilled workforce of civilian technicians and military personnel who specialize in all manner of aspects of engine repair. Tinker also contains various state-of-the-art facilities, specialized tools, and advanced testing equipment, all of which are necessary for diagnosing and fixing engine issues. Of course, working on hundreds of large aircraft at once necessitates an incredible amount of space. For that reason, Tinker Air Force Base currently covers more than 4,000 acres and employs more than 26,000 individuals. This makes it one of the world's largest and most important aircraft repair facilities. That's the end of this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. 
See you next time.